What's up, everybody, and welcome to From the Top Rope. I am your host, Gers Brooms, and this is episode number 12. It's so good to have you guys here. We're here to talk about the weekend wrestling along with a couple other little things. But before we get started, I would love to talk about our sponsors. We are sponsored today by Bath AF. That is Bath AF. Best bath bombs in the world, bath bombs for everybody. You can visit them on Instagram at I Love Bath AF. Check them out for all your bath bomb needs. Listen, you've had a hard day at work, you're tired as shit, and you need to take a chill. Take yourself a hot bath and dunk one of Bath AF's best bath bombs in the world into the bath to enhance that soak uh, to its oomph degree. You know what I'm saying? Check them out on Instagram at I Love Bath AF. From there, you can get on their Etsy page and they will hook you up and you can customize color, scent, whatever you need. That's one more time at I Love Bath AF for the best bath bombs in the world. We are also sponsored by Twin Hippo Designs. That is Twin Hippo Designs on Instagram. They are a perfect stop for cute stationary items for your small business. Whether or not you're looking for some uh, note cards or uh, thank you notes or stickers, whatever it might be, enhance that relationship you have with your customers uh, for your small business through Twin Hippo Designs. You can visit them on Instagram at Twin Hippo Designs. From there, you can go to their Etsy shop and they will hook you up with some beautiful stationary items. You can also contact for some custom items. Once again, our sponsors at I Love Bath AF for the best bath bombs in the world and at Twin Hippo Designs for cute stationary items for your small business. Now, I am back on my regular schedule. I'd be lying if saying my life wasn't like wonky and out of whack. Uh, being, uh, I got my goatee and my hair is all out of control because I've been under COVID lockdown um, until last Thursday. Uh, with uh, my house testing positive for COVID. So it has been a fantastic journey. So I'm trying to get back in the rhythm. Um, I watched a lot of wrestling this week and I kind of wanted to talk about wrestling. So real quick, let's run down some news. I've got a lot of shit I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk fast. So if you're watching, if you're listening, check us out. Actually, I'm going to take a moment. If you're watching, check me out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Just search from the top rope and you'll see me subscribe and add a review on there if you're listening or watching this if you could add a review that would be super sweet um, if you're listening to this you can also see me on youtube um damn i don't have my youtube it's gerge brooms uh if you look up gerge brooms you can find me on youtube i'll actually get my i probably should have my channel ready but i'm not a professional at all uh, but you can follow me on instagram because this is also on instagram at i hate gerge brooms and you can follow this um podcast on instagram at From the Top Rope Podcast. Uh, both of those, you can see the videos on all three of those platforms. Um, and you can also download the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Please, please, please support podcast, um, and I would appreciate it. So, real quick, let's talk. <laughs> real quick, we got a lot of shit to talk about. Let's talk about the news this week. What happened this week? I'm going to start off with the most recent and what I consider the biggest news is that WrestleMania 37 was postponed. Uh, from like the end of March to April uh, 10th through 11th. It will be a two-day event and is being relocated from L.A. Um, to the original spot for WrestleMania 36, which is Raymond James Stadium down in Tampa. And uh, according to reports, tickets will be on sale for fans to attend. Now, whether or not that's full capacity, whatever it might be, but uh, more info will come out throughout the next couple weeks. Fans will be there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, in, I'm based out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida which is about six and a half hours north of Tampa. And best believe, I had tickets to WrestleMania last year whenever they canceled it. Best believe I'll be at WrestleMania this year. And I look forward to reporting on that live from Tampa. Um, as part of that press conference, they also announced WrestleMania 38 and 39. So WrestleMania 38 will be at the AT&T Stadium in Dallas on April 3rd, 2022. And WrestleMania 39 will be at Sophie Stadium, where this year's WrestleMania was supposed to be in L.A., on April 2nd, 2023. Big news coming out about WrestleMania. Um, I, I didn't really watch the press conference. I think the press conference had like Triple H and John Cena. It's like a little virtual press conference. Uh, I heard it was great though. But big news coming out for WrestleMania. I am stoked. I will 100% be at WrestleMania and I can't wait. Um, so that was the big news that just happened right, uh, I think it was yesterday that the information dropped. And um, also, before I forget, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to tell you, I talked about this on my Instagram, I'm going to tell you all about my professional wrestling debut that happened last night um, at Combat Sports Pro event here in Fort Walton Beach. Stay tuned and I'll talk all about the, my grand debut 
<laughs> professional wrestling last night. Um, but that is a sad segue to uh, what happened earlier this week was Drew McIntyre tested positive for COVID. Um, as a guy who had COVID, uh, who has recovered out of COVID, I didn't have any symptoms, just like Drew McIntyre was speaking of uh, on Monday Night Raw. He also doesn't have any symptoms. Um, it's still a scary, weird thing when you don't really know um, what that means um, because it is such an interesting thing where it can affect people differently and stuff. Um, best wishes to Drew McIntyre. Um, they've booked it for him and Goldberg at, at WrestleMania um, as a result of this Monday Night Raw. But um, the big news also coming out of this, apparently there's a, more people who are less profiled than um, uh, Drew McIntyre who also tested positive. And not only in WWE, but apparently in WWE, oh, I'm sorry, over in uh, AEW as well and down in NXT. Apparently there's a little bit of an outbreak going on. Um, and, uh, you know, not to stir up the rumor mill, but people, you know, a lot of wrestlers cross communicate with wrestlers in other, uh, promotions because of either re previous relationships or current relationships, or some of them are, um, like Adam Cole and Britt Baker. They're, uh, they're together. So, um, there's been a lot of talk about parties, New Year's Eve. Uh, they had a lot of parties where a lot of them were kind of mingling together, but who knows, whatever. Um, best wishes to Drew McIntyre and hopefully he recovers completely. Because uh, he's got to beat Oldberg uh, at Wrestle at uh, the Royal Rumble. Um, also, was revealed this week. Nick Jackson uh, he put a uh, he revealed that in September he had COVID. He had a shitty case of COVID where he was basically locked down for three weeks, um, and uh, his smell and taste were gone for two and a half, three months. Um, yeah, it was a kind of just a little bit of a revelation that came out this week. He he struggled through COVID last uh, last summer slash fall. Um, I gotta pull up my phone for this one. Um, uh, T Bar and T Bar and uh, Sammy Guevara going hard on uh, Twitter. Hold on, let me pull the picture. I gotta pull it up. They were, um, they were talking. Where's that? There it is. So, yeah, so T Bar and Sammy Guevara were talking shit on uh, on Twitter. And uh, this was so. This I can't really tell which happened first, so bear with me. I think this one's the the first tweet. Um, someone tell Panda Kid. This is T Bar on Twitter. Uh, someone tell Panda Kid. I had a singles match on TV last night, and I didn't. St oh wait, shit. Here we go. About my. I'm reading the last one first. So here, let me read the first one first. Some little teenage version. This is still T Bar. Some little teenage version on AEW stole my finisher like four years ago after we did a show together. I stole something from his move set, but it all. It's all just King Ricochet's move. So, calling out Sammy Guevara. No tags, but apparently he, Sammy Guevara knew who he was talking about. And then Sammy Guevara <laughs> replied, Someone tell T-Bag the move actually belongs to Matt Demarest, the, uh, the guy who he stole it from. And I'm just trying to get the move to be seen since you know you're never on TV. He's never on TV. Also, while you're sitting doing nothing and catering on Monday, check out my newest vlog. Okay. And then T-Bar replied, Someone tell Panda Kid I had a singles match on TV last night. I didn't steal the move from some backyarder. I thought of it in a professional wrestling ring with Kill from Nova. Trying to be creative sometime instead of, oh, I don't know, making jokes about rape. Whoa! It got a little bit weird with uh, T-Bar and Sammy Guevara on Twitter. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. I love seeing the promotions talk shit to each other like this. I think it's fantastic. We'll talk about how the promotions are kind of cooperating later on in the show. But I find it awesome whenever they talk shit to each other. I think this is what they should be doing, just talking shit. I don't know why I find it so fascinating. Um, the <laughs> So, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing on my computer. Let me shut that down before my whole computer freaks out. There we go. Um, all right, so, and then uh, some news that came out of uh, Impact Wrestling, Hard to Kill last night. Um, Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown are now your new Impact commentary team. Uh, they took over last night for Hard to Kill. They were fine. They did fantastic. It was okay. Uh, no big deal. All right, sorry. I just had to make a quick edit. The uh, My wife came in and let me know she was leaving. Uh, they go pick up my kids, so uh, <laughs> sorry for the, the disruption. But I think we're talking about Ricochet. Ricochet, uh, there's a lot of rumors this week that Ricochet's contract was expiring this month. People were kind of doing some quick maths with, um, with his contract and when he signed on the NXT and stuff like that. But uh, Ricochet came out and confirmed... Um, that he is on a contract until 2024. Poor Ricochet. Ricochet, blink twice. Blink twice if you need us to help you. I'm really sad for you, Ricochet, with the, your current treatment in WWE. I was really hoping your contract would be up so you could at least use it as a leverage move uh, for either more money or more time. 
and uh, or make the jump over to another uh, promotion. But Ricochet is on tap for WWE for another three years. Sorry, Ricochet. Um, and uh, other rumors getting squashed this week. AEW is no longer leaving Daly's place. There was rumors, I think, last week we talked about on the show about AEW moving down to Miami to kind of improve the morale of the show or morale of the, 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 the workers uh, because it's cold as shit and outdoor arenas are trying to find some indoor arena where they could work. Um, that is not happening. They are staying put in Daly's Place in Jacksonville, which makes me happy because that means Revolution will be in Daly's Place. And best believe I'm getting my tickets for Revolution in Daly's Place. Can't wait. And uh, uh, also Madison Ray announced uh, yesterday, uh, or I think today really, maybe? I can't remember exactly when it dropped, that she is retiring from Impact. So just want to give a shout out to Madison Rain for her uh, her work over at Impact. Um also, uh, they announced some top WWE stars that will be uh, on WWE Superstar Spectacle on the 26th of January. This is the India special to kind of how launch their uh, their India uh, brand, if you will, or their India reach. I saw some crazy report that in India, um, WWE gets something like eight million views a week uh, with their TV shows. Um, like not internet, but I'm talking about like on TV, they get eight million views. So. Who knew the Indian market was that big for WWE? But here's some of the names that they listed for the Superstar Spectacle on the 26th of um, January, which is going to be held inside the Thunderdome. They've got Drew McIntyre, Rey Mysterio, Charlotte Flair, AJ Styles, Bailey, New Day, Shinsuke Nakamura, Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode, Ricochet, Ric Flair, Jinder Mahal. Many more, many more wrestlers, but then also on top of that, uh, a lot of WWE NXT Indian superstars. Um, they had a whole list of them. Most of them, I kind of don't know who they are. Uh, but uh, it'd be a good show. I, I can't wait for it. I'll watch it, most definitely. It's going to be on the network, I'm assuming. Um, be on the network at some point. And uh, closing up, getting close to closing up the news, uh, the thing that came out today, uh, or I saw today right before this podcast, was that the uh, WWE was not planning on uh, having an in-person Hall of Fame, but they will be doing a virtual Hall of Fame event this year. Uh, but the big news is that they will be doing a Hall of Fame. Uh, everybody remembers last year how they just kind of skipped it and stopped talking about it and didn't have it. Um, there will be one this year, and it'll be a virtual one. And uh, finally, closing out the news, um, I just wanted to kind of pitch out the updated uh, the, or the newest members that have uh, declared themselves in the Royal Rumble this week, which is coming up in just over two weeks. Um, well, shouldn't know two weeks from today. Um, let's look. We got Jey Uso, Cesaro, and The Miz uh, joining the Men's Royal Rumble. And uh, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose have declared uh, their entrance into the female Royal Rumble. And, oh, I cannot wait. I got a big podcast planned for a pre-Royal Rumble. Um, also, just like I did uh, for the for the last WWE pay-per-view, I'm going to start doing these for uh, the post-pay-per-views. I'm going to do a live on Instagram, at I Hate Gerge Brooms. So follow me on Instagram one more time, at I Hate Gerge Brooms. I'll do a live show on Instagram and release it as a podcast. Um doing a um, live review of the Royal Rumble immediately following the Royal Rumble. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the news. A lot of stuff happening this week. And uh, just even more real quick, I want to run down my thoughts and feelings on this week in wrestling um, and kind of just start at Monday and work my way down. So um, I'm going to hit the high points, uh, if, there, if you can call some of these high points. Uh, Monday Night Raw was once again trash. I understand completely that Drew McIntyre testing positive for COVID, and apparently the rumor is others are also test positive for COVID. Really throws a wrench and shit. But I've seen other shows and other promotions do a hell of a lot better of a job of thinking on the fly and coming up with a better show than this. Um, they, they had like several matches where um, the wrestlers did double duty, like they would wrestle and then somebody would come out and they wrestle another match. I think it was like three different times. Uh, that that happened. That's really weird. Um, I, I kind of noticed that when it happened the second time, I was like, okay, this is weird. But when it happened the third time, I was like, okay, some goofy shit is happening. That's some lazy writing. Um, you sh you have a deep enough roster in WWE to be able to figure this out. Um, and I know I feel like I'm just shitting on Raw, but I am just shitting on Raw. You could have figured this out, WWE, but you didn't. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the end of the night saw... Uh, a flaming sledgehammer from Triple H, which I, it was like it was nice seeing Triple H. Um, I you know I, I'm glad that they made it look like legit, like he was unexpectedly challenged by uh, by Randy Orton. Um, he was out there like in a t-shirt and shit like that. 
Um, I appreciate that. But the flaming sledgehammer was a little weird. And um, I mean, I, I, I get really kind of like weird about the, the spooky stuff because I dug it back when The Undertaker did it. I don't know why I'm not digging it now. Maybe because everything about this is corny. Um, and then Triple H teleported, which was awesome. He just disappeared. Um, he should probably update us on uh, Facebook Live like he does with his NXT shows about where ha where he went and what happened to him. Um, but then uh, the big thing is Alexa Bliss came out and shot a fireball at Randy Orton's face. Um, this is all leading into what we're assuming is another match with The Fiend. Um, my personal opinion, I think I said this last week, I heard this somewhere on the internet, so this is, I'm not taking credit for this. I'm just repeating what I heard. Um, uh, I would like to see... Uh, Bray Wyatt come back in the Royal Rumble in the Royal Rumble as all three versions of himself uh, like the man, man, Mankind Mick Foley, uh, Dude Love however you want to call it, uh, Cactus Jack did back in the day, um, I think that'd be the best way to bring him back after you know he was burned alive, you know what I'm saying um, but no, no surprise here, Monday Night Raw was trash, but um, it is what it is uh, moving into the uh, the better part of the week, Wednesday nights, uh, I'm going to skip over uh, Impact because we'll talk about uh, Hard to Kill a little later. Um, but the better part of the week is Wednesday nights. I've said it before, Wednesday nights are the only time I actually watch uh, all, no interrupted. I watch both NXT and AEW. And uh, NXT had a pretty good show this week. NXT had uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, Dusty Rose tag team champion or tag team tournament term tournament tournament uh, tournament uh, matches. The Grizzled Young Veterans uh, defeated Everrise to advance in the Dusty Rose Classic, um, and then uh, the surprise team MSK. There's a lot of hype going on for the last for the couple days leading into NXT about who MSK was, um, and uh, they defeated Jake Atlas and Isaiah Scott. Um, MSK, of course, turned out to be the Rascals from Impact Wrestling, who uh, were we knew signed with the company um, a few months ago, I believe. Uh, maybe I feel like it was maybe sooner than that, maybe just a few weeks ago. Um, they defeated them, so they move on. Great debut for them, and of course, the Und undisputed era defeated Breezango in a pretty fun match. Um, uh, and uh, I don't like the corny stuff whenever because they're trying to turn the undisputed era uh, uh, face right, or they are face, but. They're trying to. They put some really corny lines in Adam Cole's mouth, and he's like, "I have much respect for Breeze Hango," you know. Or shut up, dude. Just I don't want to. You, you can be a face without being corny as hell. So don't be corny. Uh, but I thought what was great whenever um, the the Pat McAfee's crew came out. Mine is Pat McAfee, of course, and was uh, fucking with Kyle O'Reilly, and then uh, Finn Balor came down to save them. I thought that was super cool. Um, I'm interested in what's going on with the Finn Balor. Undisputed Era stuff because of what's going on over in AEW. Um, a lot of parallels and, uh, and maybe they're trying to do their own little thing, you know what I'm saying, over here. Uh, with some Bullet Club style stuff. I don't know. Fascinated by it. I can't wait to see what they do, it, do with it. Um, and finally for NXT, uh, the stuff they're doing with Zia Lee is fantastic. Uh, I like her taking out jobbers in less than a minute. Um, I think her entrance is super cool until she starts doing the karate noises like right after like the grand entrance and right as she starts to walk to the ring she starts doing like all the karate noises and stuff. That stuff is cool until or the, the moves are cool and that part's cool but she's making the noises and because there's no real true audience noise in the in the building it sounds like it's just her and the camera and her I think it's corny. Stop it, Zia Lee. You're too cool for this now. You're really cool. You don't need to be making those corny ass noises. Or at least try to figure out how to edit them to where they don't sound so dead and they sound flat. Um, but other than that, I love the Zia Lee stuff. Um, uh, so, real quick, on NXT UK. Um, it's a fun little show if you have a chance to watch it. Um, Walter defended his UK championship uh, against A-Kid, who's the Heritage, current Heritage Cup champion. Um, and uh, what a great match. Of course, we knew A-Kid wasn't going to beat Walter. Um, uh, but they put on a great match, and I bit on a couple of those uh, a couple of those two counts. I bit on them. And um, uh, NXT in general, but you know, NXT UK too, they know how to... How to, how to uh, what do you call it? How to push somebody in losses. Like, they, I mean, I still think A-Kid did a great job and put over uh, A-Kid in a loss. And um, you should really check it out. If you haven't watched NXT UK, just go back and watch the Walter A-Kid match from this week. It was fantastic. Now, whew, 
I'm going through this stuff because I really want to talk about my debut in professional wrestling last night. But I also want to talk about a bunch of wrestling that happened. Not only this week, but I watched some other like not normal wrestling programs this week. So real quick, let me take a sip of my delicious adult beverage. Mmm. For a Sunday afternoon. And um, I watched a throwback wrestling pay-per-view that I just wanted to briefly talk about. And um, if you guys don't have the WWE Network and you don't go check out some of their old shows and stuff like that, you really are missing out. Um, and I decided this week I was going to watch um, WWE Bash of the Beach 1996. Now, any wrestling fan knows exactly what pay-per-view this is. This is the pay-per-view where Hulk Hogan turned heel and betrayed WCW. And him and the Outsiders, Hall and Nash, created the New World Order. It's the first time you heard the phrase... New World Order uttered in professional wrestling. And um, when you actually go back and watch the show itself, it was actually a pretty decent little show. And it's kind of fascinating watching the show. Here we are, you know, 24, 25 years later, um, because the show exists as if it's not about to change the world, which I think is fascinating about it. It's not about to change the world of professional wrestling as far as the show goes. Um, they definitely made a big deal uh, about the who's the third man, how these outsiders were tearing apart the fabric of WCW. But if you look at the matches, they were just normal people living their normal wrestling lives. The show opened with Rey Mysterio Jr. defeating Psychosis. Rey Mysterio Jr., here we are. Rey Mysterio Jr., 25 years later, still killing it um, in matches. Uh, this was uh, early, early in his WCW career. I'm pretty sure he debuted just the month before. Um, but yeah, Ray Mysterio defeating Psychosis, uh, John Tenta defeating Big Bubba in a Carson City Silver Dollar match. Now this was a match where they had a, a sock, and it was a shitty looking sock hanging from a pole, and in that sock was a bunch of silver dollars, and this is going back to some stuff on Nitro where it all makes sense. Um, but both these dudes were big dudes, and there's no way in hell they were climbing up there. And I'm trying to remember how they got it, I think they just... They oh the it's the pole was strapped was like legit straps to the ring post and they just undid the straps and that's how they did it and of course uh, John Tenta beat the shit out of Big Bubba with him and uh, I don't know how they gimmick that but it looked like it hurt really bad and then a heel DDP a heel Diamond Dallas Page defeated Hacksaw Jim Duggan in a tape fist match other than their fist being taped that's all I know about what a tape fist match is. Uh, but it was, a, it was a fun little match. Um, the dog collar match, you had a Nasty Boys uh, versus Public Enemy in a dog collar match. Um, they beat the shit out of each other, went all over the place. Uh, it was fantastic. Um, and then Dean Malenko, the Cruiserweight Champion, uh, defeated Disco Inferno. Uh, I am a huge Disco Inferno mark. I've, I've talked about this before. I loved Disco Inferno when I was a kid. When I went and saw uh, WCW Saturday Night tapings uh, back in like 97 or 98, um, he was one of the wrestlers that showed up, and I was really excited. Big Disco Inferno mark. Um, and even watching back, he was definitely, he was good, man. He was good. Maybe not the best pro wrestler, but his character, he was honed in on his character and was doing a great job. Um, and then Steve McMichael uh, defeated Joe Gomez. This is Steve McMichael in his very infancy of his uh, WCW career. It's fun watching him wrestle because he's not that great. Uh, shout out to WrestleBotch who has, I think, Steve McMichael Monday or some shit like that where they just show uh, Steve McMichael uh, fuck up clips, botch clips uh, from the past. That's fun to watch that stuff. Um, and here we go. Ric Flair uh, defeating Conan uh, for the WCW United States Heavyweight Champion. So Ric Flair became WCW United States Champion that night. Uh, very cool stuff. And then um, uh, then the this was still going from what I remember from being a, a kid and being a WCW mark when I was a kid. Um, the Chris Benoit versus the Dungeon of Doom storyline stuff. Um, this was the Giant and the Taskmaster from the Dungeon of Doom versus Arn Anderson and Chris Benoit from the Four Horsemen. Uh, fun match. Uh, Giant and the Taskmaster defeated Arn and Chris Benoit. Um, but really, all of these matches were just built up to the to the main event. The Outsiders, Kevin Nash, uh, yeah, it says on here, fought Randy Savage, Sting, and Lex Luger to a no contest. Um, so if you don't remember, you should remember. But maybe you, see, most people remember the 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 um, third man. Who's going to be the third man? And of course, Hulk Hogan comes out, ends up being the third man. But you may not remember the nuances of the match. 
So the nuances were Sting, Sting, Luger, and Macho Man took it personally, especially Sting, of what they were doing. And uh, and up to this point, Sting and Luger were actually tag team champions together. And Macho Man Randy Savage was banned from WCW live events or televised events. Um, it was the pay-per-view before this, Great American Bash, where those kind of were squashed. Um, and uh, they lost the tag belts of that one, too. So it was kind of like... There's a lot of frustrations building up just in general from Lex Luger, Sting, and Macho Man. And then these outsiders are showing up. And man, you got to go back and watch that original Invasion because it was done perfectly. Um, but they're like, you know what? We're going to come together. We're going to unify. And we're going to take on the outsiders. Um, so what happens is they came out at the beginning of the match, the outsiders that is. And they came out just them. Two people, not three people. And they interviewed them before they brought out the opposing team. And they're like, where's your third man? And I'm like, don't worry about it. He'll be here when he needs to be here, but he's here. But we don't need him right now. So they go into the match, and I do know there's a lot of uh, rumors that it was going to be Sting. So there was a perfectly done uh, placement where Sting accidentally splashed Luger a little bit. And Luger was deemed uh, knocked unconscious and needed to be removed from the match. They had the medical staff come out and get him and everything. And that shit was wild because I can only imagine what it was like back then like looking at the, uh, if you thought the rumors were it was going to be Sting, you thought it was Sting. So um, I try to look at it like as if I don't know the ending already when I'm watching it. Here we are 25 years later. Uh, but when you see Hulk Hogan come down, when they're at their their, uh, their weakest, Luger, I'm sorry, uh, Sting and Macho Man, because Luger's been taken out now. They're at their weakest and Hulk Hogan comes out. Um I'm trying to figure out what I have what I have thought about it back then. What I have thought it was Hulk Hogan was the third man, and um, the way the crowd popped when Hogan came out, nobody fucking knew anything. And when Hogan turned heel and Hogan did that leg drop, uh, three leg drops on Macho, um, and of course they trashed the ring, ring, and then he cuts that world famous promo right afterwards. Um, the rest is history, but. Uh, fascinating pay-per-view to actually go back watch in whole, um, at, you know, knowing what we know now in hindsight of the the creation of the NWO and the creation of or the what changed wrestling forever. Um, that what really what we that feeling we look for now, like we want that same feeling we had with the NWO causing chaos. We 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 crave that feeling now and wish we had it in our current professional wrestling. But great show. You should definitely go back and watch Bachelor Beach 96. Go watch the whole show on the WWE Network. Now, speaking of the WWE Network, um, before I f- recorded today, I watched the AJ Styles Day of, his Royal Rumble debut, which just premiered on the WWE Network. And um, really good. They have gotten really good at these uh, Day of documentaries. Um, uh, uh, or is this Day of? I can't remember if it's Day of or Untold. Hold on. I may be lying to you. Is it Untold or Day of? I may be... Using the wrong term. I'm, I'm sorry, not Day Of, Untold. I love the Untold uh, documentaries. Day Of's are pretty cool too, but um, the WWE Untold, Untold, AJ Styles Royal Rumble debut. Um, so I didn't know who AJ Styles was. Um, I got out of wrestling back in 2005, right around the time Eddie Guerrero died is when I stopped watching wrestling. And uh, they get back into it till 2018. So um, AJ Styles, that was his prime years right there. Um, and he had already debuted in... Uh, and uh, WWE, and I didn't know who he was. So this is a fascinating look at his career for me personally. But what I thought was fascinating, and what I really wanted to talk about today, was the use of a lot of... Not only did they mention TNA, they mentioned Impact, they mention New Japan. Um, they, I mean, obviously they talk about the indies and stuff like that. They don't really care about the indies. But, um, like, I don't know, and maybe this is just me overthinking it, but they went above and beyond talking about... TNA. I mean, they talked had talked with Samoa Joe and talked about their relationship and just being in TNA. And then they kind of bashed TNA a little bit um, when they talked about how much they were paying uh, AJ. But um, and they really talked about Bullet Club. They talked about the Bullet Club. I, I I just thought it was fascinating the how loose they were with talking about other promotions because WWE is kind of does this dorky thing and they always have done this dorky thing where. They even kind of do it internal. They, not really as much anymore, but they used to do it. Like, NXT didn't exist. Like, they would... Like, remember when they had the first ever last woman standing match, I think it was, or the first woman, first ever Iron Woman match. I can't remember which one it was. And 
they had already done that in NXT, but they just pretended like NXT didn't exist. WWE's got a bad habit of just pretending like all of the promotions don't exist, to include the ones inside their own organization. Um, so to see them just kind of legit be vulnerable and actually talk about that there are other promotions out there, I don't know, I thought it was very eye-opening, I thought it was very cool, and I was wondering how they're going to get away with it with AJ Styles, since the majority of his career exists in other promotions, and that's all critical to that wonderful pop at the Royal Rumble 2016, where you had to know who he was for that pop to work, and of course, the pop was awesome, and the rest is history. Uh, but definitely check out Untold, WWE Untold, AJ Styles' Royal Rumble debut. Um, it's only about 36 or 37 minutes, something like that. It's perfect. Check it out. All right. Get a sip of my beer. Mmm. AEW Dynamite. Oh, I love me some AEW Dynamite this week. Um, all right. So first off, let's talk about the Inner Circle's New Year's resolutions. Um, I loved... Um, I loved uh, uh, Jake Hagar, Jake Hagar, uh, Trevor Champs, <laughs> Trevor Champs. I, I don't know why I thought that was so great, and I enjoyed the hell out of MJF talking about you want to get rid of fat people, and um, there's some other good ones on there too. Um, but their, but their New Year's resolutions led to them uh, somehow. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but Jericho and MJF talking about they're going to go after the tag belts. Oh yeah, that's how it happened. Jericho was like, yeah, we're going to go after the tag belts. And uh, that's when Santana Ortiz were like, uh, wait a minute, we're the official tag team of the Inner Circle. And so um, that's whenever Jericho declares that there will be a triple threat Inner Circle tag team elimination match. <gasps> well, I can't remember if it's elimination or not. Sorry. I didn't write I didn't write elimination down, so it may not be elimination. But um, it's Jericho and MGF versus Santana Ortiz versus Guevara and Hagar. Uh, Hagar. Um, I keep saying Hagar because they they did Sammy Hagar. They it was Sammy and Hagar, Sammy and Hagar, and it was it was it was a funny thing if you, if you watched the episode. Um, but uh, and the winner of that match will be deemed the official tag team of the Inner Circle. Of course, all this is leading to the breakup of the Inner Circle, and the way they're doing it is like the Inner Circle has like their own little universe that they're existing in right now, where nobody else matters, and that's fantastic. Let them tell their Inner Circle stories now. Um, I love it. Um, the elite, I air quote, air, uh, Galif, uh, versus Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr. And Danny Limelight. The only thing I want to talk about this, this was the good brothers. Uh, we definitely thought it was going to be, uh, Omega and, um, Omega and, uh, shit. You ever just, you ever like forget something that's so easy and you're like, and you realize you're forgetting it. And then you start hyper-focusing that you're forgetting it, that you forget even further. And there's like, that's what I'm doing right now with, uh, Oh, this is embarrassing. I'm a Mac Jackson. Let me. <laughs> I hope I hope everyone's enjoying this part of the podcast where I literally can't remember the AEW Tag Team Champions. Um, this is embarrassing, but I don't want to cut this out either. I'm going to leave it in just for you guys. Um, um, and it's funny is that I can't remember them even right now. Like even like after all this. I still can't remember. The Young Bucks. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Please mark that down. About 34, 35 minutes into the podcast, I couldn't remember who the hell the Young Bucks were. But, so back to the same. Without Omega's going to be teaming with the Young Bucks. At least that's the way they made it look. Um, and then the Good Brothers came out. The Impact Tag Team Champions came out. And, uh, of course, they had the match, and they won. And uh, it was all fine and dandy. All that setting up hard for kill, hard to kill which we'll talk about a little bit later, which was last night on pay-per-view from uh, Impact. And, um, man, Serena Deeb and uh, Tay Conte had a fucking banger, too, uh, for the NWA Women's Champion uh, Championship. Uh, Serena Deeb is awesome, and she is everything that AEW needs. I think she's, she's like, in that weird position, because I believe she's under contract with AEW, but she's the NWA Champion. Um, and just kind of like, uh, they had that that Dr. Britt Baker uh, waiting room uh, uh, talk show. Um, I thought that was fantastic, too. Um, really funny stuff. Um, uh, Jay Cargill is fucking ridiculous. I'm terrified of her. Uh, but they even had that cool promo from uh, Thunder Rosa. Um, so, obviously, they're setting up Thunder Rosa uh, versus uh, Britt Baker. Um, but even then, I think... It's funny, so you have Serena Deeb, who I think is an AEW wrestler, who's currently the NWA Women's Champion, uh, and then you have uh, Thunder Rosa, who's an NWA wrestler, who's really heavily 
on a AEW storyline. It's fascinating. Just rolling with it, and I love every second of it. Um, it's better than whatever the hell they were doing with the Abaddon and uh, the championship. Uh, this stuff is way better. And uh, match uh, the, the match of all matches this week, I think. Uh, Darby Allen versus Brian Cage, TNT Championship match. Awesome match. Uh, they beat the shit out of each other. There's this shot where Brian Cage like is, is pre- overhead pressing... Darby Allen and just throws him out of the ring from the ring over the ropes down the ring and through a fucking table. Um, that's where Darby Allen came out. He had blood all over his head. That shit was fantastic. Hard hitting match. Exactly what you want to see if you're looking from an underdog like Darby Allen was being portrayed as and a big guy like um, Brian Cage just beating the shit at each other. And of course, uh, the quick uh, crucifix roll up or whatever. Uh, Darby Allen retains his belt. Um, and, uh, oh, Sting came out. That's right, because uh, they, I think, uh, uh, yeah, Sting came out. What's his name? I, I can't, I, I, I suck at thinking people's names on the fly, even though I know exactly who they are. Um, Sting came out and helped out Darby Allen from outside of interference. And then, um, yeah, the match was over with. Uh, fantastic match. Darby Allen retains his TNT championship. Awesome stuff. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going to roll into... Um, Friday Night Smackdown, which it's it's crazy to me, and I, I might say this every week, but I'm going to keep saying it every week. It's crazy to me that Friday Night Smackdown exists on the, from the same creative team as Raw, because Raw is so trash and Smackdown is so good. So let me just go over a few th- big things that happened from Smackdown this week. Shinsuke Nakamura's obvious face turn and brought his music back, and, and uh, like a s- same thing with AJ Styles, I wasn't watching wrestling, so I have no idea who Shinsuke is. So I go back and I've watched his debut on SmackDown uh, on YouTube and that vibe that comes from the music and the crowd, it was so good to hear that music again. Um, he defeated uh, Jey Uso in an awesome opening match to SmackDown after Jey Uso came out and was just talking mad shit. Um, great stuff. Um, I thought the whole ding dong hello stuff with Bailey and Bel- Bianca Belair, I thought it was ridiculous, but ridiculous in the right way. Exactly what I want to see in my professional wrestling. Bailey is... The top women's heel in WWE right now. And um, uh, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan in a fucking banger. Cesaro defeated Daniel Bryan, which is crazy, but they tore the house down. Now, I know I just mentioned earlier that WWE is over Raw and SmackDown, right? And why is Raw so bad and SmackDown so good? Well, you know, the rumors are that Daniel Bryan has a lot of creative control. I know he's on the creative, uh, he's on SmackDown creative, but he has a lot of creative control and uh, so does Roman Reigns, too. I think they have more creative control than anybody on um, Raw does when it comes from the wrestler standpoint. So maybe their influence is pointing this right now because this match with Daniel Bryan and Cesaro was awesome match to watch. Um, he did like this. Cesaro had him, like, and they are going to do, like, a superplex from the top rope, but then, like, threw him, like, twisted him down. Oh, the shit was amazing. Cesaro ended up with a win. Um, great stuff for Cesaro. Um and then probably the coolest part of the match, or the coolest part of the show, excuse me, was the kind of the, the build-up to the end with the contract signing between Adam Pearce and Roman Reigns. And throughout the night, they had uh, kind of teased that uh, Roman Reigns wanted a, uh, what was it, a no disqualification match, and Adam Pearce signed or whatever, kicked it back. He's like, no, nah, that was too easy. I want a last man standing match. And it was basically Roman Reigns just full flexing his head of the table, his uh, tribal chief, or whatever you want to call it. And... All of it, the same reason that Adam Pearce is even the number one contender is because this is what Roman Reigns does. He's just flexing. And they went to do the, the actual contract signing at the end of the show. Adam Pearce, Roman Reigns signed. Adam Pearce grabbed the book, politely walked out of the ring. And yeah, he had some like mic issues or something like that. And you couldn't really understand what he was saying. But basically, he was like, uh, card subject to change. I'm the boss. I can do whatever I want or whatever. And he changed it from him to Kevin Owens. For the Royal Rumble. So it looks like at the Royal Rumble, we're going to get Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship in a last man standing match. I thought the way they handled this was perfectly. They built it up to the end of the night. So I had to be there at the end of the night to see how it was going to play out. Well done, WWE. All right. So last thing before we stop uh, talking about the weekend wrestling is last night was Impact's Hard to Kill. Watched, uh, watched it this morning. Watched the highlights this morning. Uh... Be honest with you, the whole show wasn't going to sell me. Like, there's a lot of filler matches in there that I didn't really care about, but there's some pretty hardcore, uh, cool matches in there. 
Um, what I really want to talk about uh, are a couple of items. Uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles defeat Havoc and Nevaya, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, to be crowned the Knockout Tag Team Champion. Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Um, oh, my phone's dying. Let me just hit that low power mode. All right. Almost done. And it was a fun match. It was nothing really anything special, but it's cool to have new Knockouts Women's Tag, knockouts tag Team Champion. Excuse me. Um, Matt Cardona showed up and uh, took on Ace Austin. Ace Austin was in the ring uh, talking shit about how he didn't have a match. So Mark, Mark, ugh, Matt Cardona showed up to challenge him. Um, there's no word whether or not he has an impact contract if he was just booked for the night. But cool to see Matt Cardona out there doing the business. And I don't know what the hell was going on with this Karate Man Ethan Page match. I wasn't tracking this match at all. I've got no fucking idea. But if you haven't watched the Karate Man versus Ethan Page, I'm telling you right now, stop listening to this podcast. Come back in a minute. I believe they put it up on their Facebook page, the entire match. It's a cinematic match. And if you're listening, I'm doing heavy air quotes with my fingers right now. A cinematic match where at the end of the match, I'm going to spoil it for you because you still have to go watch it to believe it. Um, the Karate Man ripped out Paige's heart and wins by heart stoppage, according to the Wikipedia page. Um, you should definitely go check this out uh, on the internet. Watch this uh, this Karate Man versus Ethan Page match from Hard to Kill. Fucking wild. Um, it's got it's got me here talking about it with you. So good job on them. Um, oh, and then the next match. I gotta say the same thing for this next match. Eddie Edwards versus Sammy Callahan. In a barbed wire massacre match. They fucked each other's worlds up. Um, lots of barbed wire. Lots of violence. Um, definitely should go check it out. The, they've started the match with like a barbed wire fence on, on a quarter of the ring. Or I'm sorry, on one side. Yeah, on a quarter of the ring. And on the other side of the ring they had some weapons. Really, really brutal match. Um, Eddie Edwards defeated Sammy Callahan. Definitely go check it out though. Um, really neat match. Lots of violence. <laughs> it, was bad. it was hard to watch. Um, and then, uh, of course, the big main event, the, the one thing everybody was talking about, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers versus Rich Swan, Kip Saban, and Moose. Uh, Moose was a last-minute addition. Uh, apologize, I don't remember the, the gentleman's name who he replaced. Uh, I know some people may be screaming at me right now, but I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Um, of course, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers win, but what I will say is, man, they had me biting on some of those, uh, uh, some of those uh, two counts, and... It was a great match, and Kenny Omega uh, is the best heel in wrestling right now, hands down. The best. I believe him as my world champion, uh, hands down. Not only does he have the cocky attitude, but just seeing him show up on somebody else's show, um, the AEW world champion wearing a Bullet Club shirt on an Impact pay-per-view. Who the fuck knows what's going on in 2021 anymore? But awesome match. I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, it saved the pay-per-view. Uh, the rest of it wasn't really anything uh, really much going on, except for like, the barbed wire massacre match and whatever the hell the karate match was. But uh, definitely saved it, and I'm pretty sure brought in a lot of eyeballs uh, on pay-per-view as well. Uh, fun stuff, fun stuff. All right, so before we get into my stories and we're going to talk about what's coming up in wrestling this week, um, I just wanted to give out my Top Rope Weekly Awards. Here we go. Insert jingle if I ever get one. So, uh, real quick, match of the week from me, Gersh Brooms. It has to go to Darby Allen versus Brian Cage. Loved it so much. That spot where he tosses him out of the ring and set a table. Uh, you, you should go back and watch it if you have it. Because the table, like, evaporates. Like, it just disappears. Fantastic stuff. Um, moment of the week goes to Shinsuke Nakamura coming out to his original face music and having his face change. Uh, turning face, um, loved it, and the, the match you put on after that was awesome too. Uh, but my wrestler of the week has to go to my man Cesaro. Cesaro put on a banger with Daniel Bryan and uh, really deserves to be there. Um, Cesaro is my wrestler of the week. And I wanted to rank my shows this week. I'm going to rank it AEW, NXT, SmackDown. Oh, sorry, I lied. SmackDown, and, I'm sorry, AEW, SmackDown, NXT, Hard to kill. Uh, NXT UK Raw at the bottom. Sorry, Raw. You suck ass. All right. And finally, before I talk about my wrestling debut last night at Combat Sports Pro as their new general manager. I don't know if I've told you all that part yet. Um, here is what we have coming up this week in wrestling. A lot of stuff has been advertised for this week. Um, tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw, Alexa Bliss will go against Asuka in a non-title match. Um, it's been a while since we've seen her wrestle, so it's going to be fantastic. 
Um, on Impact Tuesday night, the fallout, obviously, from Hard to Kill will be going on. Uh, big stuff in NXT this week is we got the Dusty Rhodes Classic and we have the Women's Dusty Rhodes Classic beginning this week. Um, on the men's side, The Way will go against Kushida and Leon Ruff. Um, then Lucha House Party versus Imperium, both of those Dusty Rhodes Classic matches. On the women's side, we'll have one match, uh, Katie Catanzaro, Katazaro, Katanzaro, Jesus, let me get my words together, and Caden Carter versus Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez for the, their uh, women's Dusty Road Classic. And of course, we get Tommaso Ciampa versus Timothy Thatcher in the fight pit. Finally, it's supposed to happen a couple weeks ago. We're getting it this Wednesday. Um, over on AEW, we're getting uh, Cody Rhodes versus Peter Avalon. Uh, John Moxley will be in action this week. And also, we're going to have Matt Seidel in top fight versus Matt Hardy and Private Party. Good shit going on over there. Um, and don't forget the Inner Circle Triple Threat Tag Team Match to see who's the official tag team of the Inner Circle will also be this week. Over on NXT UK, we'll have Jenny versus Kaylee Ray for the NXT UK Women's Championship. And on SmackDown, Big E versus Apollo Crews for the Intercontinental Championship. Can't wait for that. And Bailey versus Bianca Belair or something on Elvis versus an obstacle course challenge. I don't know what the hell is going on there, but I'm super excited that that was uh, kind of came out of their uh, their ding dong show this week. And uh, that's all I have down for this week in wrestling. A lot of shit happened this week and got a little busy, busy week this week as we're marching towards the Royal Rumble. And don't forget, we have that NXT pay per view on the 14th of February. We're really looking forward to it. Don't forget after that. We have AEW Revolution, which we're really super excited about. So what I want to close the show out on was talking about my debut in professional wrestling last night. So I kind of want to give you some backstory on this. Um, we Here in Fort Walton Beach, we have um, a, uh, a independent promotion called Combat Sports Pro. Um, they just started their shows back up in November, and I went to their show. Uh, we, they do it in a brewery, which I think is awesome. So if you go on my Instagram, at I Hate Girls Brooms, I took some pictures. You notice all the kegs and stuff and the stuff. It's in a brewery, uh, which is awesome. It was a good show last night, too. I think it was like 50 or 60 people there. Um, but um, So I've been communicating with the, the promotion uh, because I want to get in. I want to get in some behind the scenes stuff, maybe doing some production stuff. Um, I'm a DJ and I have lights and stuff like that. Maybe I can help out with that, make the make the show uh, better, even, you know, not that it's bad, but make it better. Um, and I just want to be a part of it because, uh, you know, from even when I was a kid, this shit just sounds fun, just being a part of a wrestling promotion, right? Uh, and I definitely am not a wrestler and I definitely don't want to be a wrestler. I have mad respect for those guys. Um, so, uh, COVID happened. I was supposed to coordinate with uh, the, the, the guy who runs the whole promotion. And uh, COVID happened and it just holidays happened. It's never around to it. So I shoot him a note and I let him know earlier this week, hey man, I've been, you know, even though I've been stuck down with COVID, I'll be released before the show and uh, I'm going to be at the show. I'm looking, really looking forward to it. Well, on Friday, he hits me up. So it's a Sunday. The show was on Saturday. He hits me up on Friday and says, hey man, um, uh, do you, are you coming to the show? And I was like, yes. He's like, do you own a suit? And I was like, no. And he was like, uh, like a suit top? And I was like, no, I don't have anything like that. I actually got rid of it because I don't fit me anymore because I'm a fat ass now. And he, he kind of, I'm like, all right, what are you getting at, man? What are you getting at? And he was like, well, we're looking for, we're looking to kind of try out, try you out as a general manager. See if you're interested. See if you fit this. And I instantly got excited. I was like, yeah, I'll do whatever. So what's a good substitute? He's like, bring a button up shirt. So I went and met with him the next day, uh, yesterday, at 2 o'clock, and met as they were the, the, the guys were in the, the ring working and practicing and all that stuff, and um, the, he kind of went over what he wanted me to do, and I instantly got excited, uh, had mic time, I didn't know I was going to have any mic time, and from my initial emails uh, or, or Facebook messages going from wanting to be just do some production stuff, all of a sudden now they want me playing this role of general manager really took me by surprise well i had dinner reservations with my friends i go to have dinner reservations with my friends and i'm telling them about it they end up coming to the show once they hear about it um, i went to goodwill and bought a eight dollar sports coat so if you see me on instagram at i hate Gurus brooms i'm wearing an eight dollar sports coat from goodwill and um i met the guys uh the guys were super nice um the the the, the wrestlers were really nice all the refs and the the different uh People on the team were really nice, really welcoming. Um, I was like a lost kid. Um, back there, I felt really out of place, and they welcomed me in and made me feel really comfortable. 
Um, and uh, when it was my time to shine, you can see it on Instagram, at I Hate Gurus Brooms, had to come out and strip uh, the heavyweight champion uh, of his belt uh, because he was attacking the refs and going a little crazy. And um, later on in the night, I actually gave uh, uh, a match to uh, the winner of a triple threat match, gave him a cruiserweight championship match, even though he's 250 pounds. But he told me he'd sue me that if I didn't give him the match because he identified as 205 pounds. And I didn't want to get sued, so I made sure I gave him a match for the Cruiserweight Championship, or the Junior Heavyweight Championship, excuse me, at the next event, which is February 20th. Um, the Rock and Roll Express are going to be there, uh, and I actually met one half of them last night, which was really awesome. Um, but really good time. I really hope I, I'm invited back. I think I will be uh, as the general manager of Combat Sports Pro, and uh, I would be lying if I didn't say that my my heart wasn't pounding out of my chest leading up to this because I went from thinking I was just attending the event to end up being in the actual show and what an honor and what a, a, a maybe corny and cheesy what a childhood dream to be um, be a part of this um, so thanks so much to my friends who came out to my I say my friends my my work my work friends but they are my friends and I appreciate them coming out my my wife and uh, my oldest son were also there, and it was awesome. Uh, my professional wrestling debut, uh, hopefully to do more. Um, I've got the itch now. It was it was exciting and a lot of fun. Um, can't wait to do it again. You can find them uh, uh, at, actually, let me look it up right now while I'm looking at their, their Instagram handle. You can find them on Facebook, I know, at Combat Sports Pro, but you can also find them uh, on Instagram. Uh, hold on, almost done. Combat... This is great radio. Combat Sport Pro Wrestling. Combat Sport Pro Wrestling on Instagram. Um, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of From the Top Row. Thank you so much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram at I Hate Gers Brooms. Follow this podcast on Instagram from the top at From the Top Row Podcast. Uh, also, don't forget to follow our sponsors and check out our sponsors at I Love Bath A Hip and at Twin Hippo Designs on Instagram. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Ciao.